What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and create some pet portraits with this very loose painting style with a nice little scribble aesthetic to it. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create this particular dog here and my recommendation is that you follow along with today's tutorial with the reference of the dog that I've provided in the description down below. And then once you follow through with this you may want to do this on your own pets. You can do this on a dog, a cat, a parrot, anything. The techniques are all exactly the same. And make sure to hang around till the end of the video where I'm going to give you some tips on what you can do for different types of dogs, some that are more full of colour, some that are black and white, and likewise a golden retriever here as well. So you may have some questions that can be answered at the very end of the video, so be sure to hang around for that. Now if you didn't already know, I post weekly Procreate tutorials here on my YouTube channel, but I also post three more exclusive tutorials every single month over on my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And with all that said, enjoy the tutorial and let's get started. So once you've created a canvas, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change the background color. So we're gonna go up to our colors. There's only two for today's palette. There is this slightly off yellow. So if we grab that and drag it onto the empty there, then the next step is to go ahead and add in our photo. Now, if you are gonna use the same reference photo that I've added here for you, you're gonna to wanna to hold down on the image and then going to want to go ahead and save that to your photos. Now, once you've done that, the next step is to add it into Procreate. So we're going to go up to our actions. We're going to go to the option of add and we're going to use the option of insert a photo. So once you've navigated to where you've got the photo, you're going to want to tap on it and add it in and it will add it in as a layer inside of your layers. So we'll leave it at exactly that and then we're going to tap on our cursor when we're done. So we can get started now with adding in the line work. So we're going to go up to our layers. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer above our inserted image. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the second color in the palette. It's this slightly gray color. Then we're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to the option of inking and we're going to use the option of ink bleed. And then we're going to go ahead and our brush size wants to be around about sort of the 15% mark and the opacity is going to be set to 100. Then what we need to do is go to our layers and we're going to grab our inserted image of our dog and we're going to tap on it and we're going to lower the opacity down and if we drop it down to something maybe around about 65%, that should give us enough detail of the dog that we can see, or the cat if you're doing a cat. And then go back to your empty layer and let's get started on the line work. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, we want to keep this nice and loose. So the first things we're looking for is initially just the actual face detail. So the nose has this beautiful little line down the middle. We've then got the actual nostrils themselves. So we create nice little cartoony sort of curves there. And then we've got the actual main shape all the way around, which is almost typically like a love heart. Go all the way around and go down to your start point. And then take a look at the nose for a second and we can identify some areas. We've got a nice highlight area here. So we wanna leave that intact. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna darken up in here and this is where we're gonna get that nice looseness of the lines. We're gonna darken up underneath the nostrils. So we're gonna go ahead and darken them up a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and make our way round, literally just scribbling our way round, round the edges, not trying to get right to the edge either. We're leaving some cool little gaps in there. And because our highlights here, we're just going to go ahead and just sort of scribble over the top here in a nice zigzaggy fashion, leaving gaps. It'll add more character. And then also I'm going to add in a little darker area here too, and nicely frame that highlight there in the middle. And you can add the odd little lighter scratch into that area if you want to break it down a little bit and give it a little bit of detail, but still give it that nice isolated space. And then here, we'll just add in a little bit here just to, to keep a little bit of a gap here from that line in the middle so you can kind of identify it a little bit. And if you zoom out, you should have this really nice sort of cartoony dog look for the nose. Now the next step then is just to carry on with that same idea. So let's go ahead and go up to the eyes next because that is a definite sort of area that we can work on. So we're just going to go ahead and outline the eye, beautiful eye, go all the way around and link up to that point. Then we'll get the curvature of the eye as well. So just curving that into here. And then we're going to identify the pupil as well, which is just in this area here. Then at this stage, we can take a look at this particular dog and see that there's this really nice dark outline around the outside. And the fur is almost going in this sort of curve outwards this way. So we'll go ahead and draw that in. So we're just gonna go ahead and do, do zigzags, leaving gaps, not keeping it too sort of uniform and leaving a little bit of gap to that eye. 
I'm going to rotate the eye as well so we can pivot the lines out from this sort of center point here and then go outwards from there underneath because they then run this way. So it's all about sort of looking for the uh, sort of flow of the, uh, the hairs and making sure we can try and match up nicely to them and keeping it nice and continuous with how they are set up on the actual dog itself. So that's one eye done. And then we can just move straight across to the other one and repeat. So you start off with your outline first of all. So we can go down the bottom edge here first into here. And then we'll go ahead and go up here and round towards that point. Then we're gonna go ahead and curve here and curve at the back over here as well for the eye. And again, get that pupil in there as well. And just because this white fur doesn't mean that it's any different, it's the same principles with the darker lines around the outside. So these nice scratch marks, just making our way round, keeping it really loose and fun. And then we'll do the same here as well. So underneath the eye, just creating this nice zigzag. And see how quick and easy I'm doing it because I'm not too stressed about it. We want that fun look to it, but enough that we're really replicating how the dog looks. So once you've done that, it's now a matter of outlining the actual main area of the head and the mouth, for example, and then identifying areas of fur that are slightly unique. So if we start off down here towards the mouth, we've got the beautiful little chops down here as they make their way down. So we'll come round here, up towards the middle point, round, and then just let our pen get really nice and thin. We then have this area here where the lip is very, very dark. And then we have the bottom edge of the the lip itself so we'll go ahead and mark that in and then we're just going to sort of darken up this area here with some dashes and then a couple more into the lighter area to kind of create that transition sort of phase between the two areas of color so again those little dashes just like we did on the top of the nose so some little area of color like this and then of course we've got this much darker area of fur around the nose so we're taking a look at the line work and they're all primarily going in this direction and this direction from that center point. So we want to try and keep our flow going in that same direction. So it might be easier sometimes to turn your canvas upside down and go in the motion. And all we're going to do is just add in a few little dashes here and there for a bit of fur going in that direction. We don't want to block it in too heavily, but little dashes, little sort of zigzags, just flicks and then making sure we flick all the way around here too so just a little flick 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 there's quite a lot of small area of hair there so we're just doing lots of light dashes and i'll repeat over here as well so in the center they kind of go down of course and then they, they flick out this way as well so we're flicking them out flicking them out lots of little nice dashes and they make their way around the nose and as they make their way up towards the top they start to sort of point upwards a little bit. So from here, they start to go outwards. That's lovely. We can sort of wrap them around. And then from here too, just a couple more dashes. And then we can go ahead and just make sure we fill in any gaps that we may have missed, just with the odd little sort of scratch of fur. So darker fur, we're really just trying to just add in a few dashes to give the illusion. So what I mean by that is we've added sort of a primary area there. These ones up here, I'm not gonna add lots and lots of little dashes, we're just going to add in the odd, the odd little flick. Just something, because we know a dog's furry, your mind fills that in for you. So we just add in a few little dashes there, just to show sort of the area of the fur. And I'm just looking for areas where we can maybe just exaggerate a little bit. So just a something like this, a few more around here, and I think we're done. So then we can go ahead and just do the same around here too. A couple more dashes in there. And that's it. So moving on, we'll then identify the rest of the head and the shapes for that. Now, although the chops sit on top, we have the underside as well. So this line down the side, we're gonna go ahead and keep it nice and light with our pressure and let that sort of run into there. So, you could, so adding in a little gap here and there will nicely sort of create that blending between where the skin just nicely rolls down into the neck. And then also there's a little bit of a curve there too. And then we're gonna take a look at this side. I'm going to go ahead and kind of repeat that and follow what I can see. So I can come down this edge, down into the neck, and then just let that get super thin and leave it. Let it just run out. Because here there's not that much definition. There's the odd little line I can just about see there. But what we can then do is go ahead and start to identify these beautiful shapes there in the face. 
So rather than just draw a line like this, that's gonna be a little bit too solid. I wanna create a nice loose scratchy effect. So I'm just gonna create some little scribbles down the middle there. We're gonna follow that down into here. So just the odd little scribble. We have a, a little sort of drop in the orange and likewise here too. And then I'm just gonna scribble, scribble, scribble and make my way to the edge. So that's kind of the effect that we wanna go with throughout the whole of this, keeping it nice and loose. Taking a look at the face over here beside the eye, we've got this line, you can see that there just here. So rather than draw it in like that, we're just gonna go ahead and add in sort of a, a little scribble down there, a little something like this. We've got this corner area here of tuft of fur. So I'm just gonna sort of exaggerate that a little bit with some sort of zigzags up and down and maybe a, another one just beside it. And then just here, we have another darker patch. I'm just gonna add in a couple of scribbles there too. Just above the eye here, we have this little tuft just on the sort of brow. And I'm just gonna go scribble, 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 flick, 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 add in some there too. And then just around the corner here, there's a little bit of like a, a rounding. I'm just gonna add in some flicks there too. And that's the look we're gonna try and maintain. Now there's also the option of course, is to add in a little bit more black around the eye here on this particular dog. So just some more dashes around there, just to add in the odd little flake of sort of detail. If we then take a look up towards the ear over here, I'm gonna go ahead and go around this line here towards there. And we're gonna keep the ears really simple. We're just gonna go ahead and just go over the top here, follow the curve down towards this point. We will go ahead and add in another one just under here that just runs towards that line. And then on the top edge, we'll go ahead and go along here. And then where we've got these nice little breakages in the fur, we're gonna go ahead and just do that sort of, just little scratchy look. So we're leaving little gaps, but it just lets you know that the fur's not nice and sort of straight there. It's a little bit sort of tufty. And then in here, we've got a very dark area. So I'm gonna be super brave and we're just gonna just darken that up. We're just gonna basically make that a shadowed area in here and then bulk that in a bit more as well. With a little bit of a sort of, zigzag and scribble there too. Likewise on the back of the ear, we can sort of add in a little bit of a scribble here just to show the line work of the ears. So we're keeping it very, very simple. If we move across now, we've got the top of the head. So we'll just go along that line. Now, depending on what type of dog you have, you may want to add in like little flicks, just like we did on the ear there, if they're a particularly furry and fluffy dog. But here at the top, we've got these sort of creases on the head. So we're just going to add in some little zigzags on there keeping it very, very simple. Dash, dash, dash. Letting my pen go up and down in terms of pressure, adding them in at the top there. There's also this like little bit of curving here. So it's just trying to look at what sort of colors are available for us to work off of. If we then continue this little bit here all the way down onto this left side, we're gonna add in those little sort of little dashes up and down. Not too repetitive though. You wanna avoid that. So we wanna just then go down here, little dashes all the way around that top edge, trying to just sort of outline the shape without perfectly outlining it. If we take a look at this eye, just like we did on the opposite side, we're looking for areas of detail. So I can see, for example, we've got these little areas of little bits of fur, so just a couple of dashes in there too. This area here, there's a line that just makes its way here. I'm just gonna go dash, 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 add in a few in there too. We'll add a couple of dashes just around the eye here because there's a couple of black hairs that sort of run astray. We then, in the curvature of the face, we have like this line here. We have a line that's running down here too. And again, just like the rest of the pattern, we will just simply just add in some nice sort of scribbles in there. You can see I went up and down and then just a line. We'll add in some here. So the whole thing is just about being quite free and loose with it. And I think the more times you practice with this design and like this particular style, you may end up really taking it all on board and having some fun and understanding that you can be nice and loose with it. So taking then a look up here, we've got a few dashes up here we just need to add, which is just like a sort of crease at the top here. We've then got this ear over here as well. So again, we're just gonna sort of run through here and then this time I'm just gonna dash, dash, dash here. We know and we can fill in the rest of the gaps with our with our mind. And then here, there's like a little tuft of hair before it then goes over the top of the ear. So I'm just gonna do that all in one motion. So I'm gonna go up the top of the ear 
and then round on itself and leave that gap there. We don't need to join that. We'll go down this edge here too, right round the outside until we get into here where we've got a little, little tuft of hair. And then we can see that there's some hairs here as well, just inside the ear. So I'm just gonna it'll just dash, dash, dash in here, trying to just add in little areas of fluff where we've got some nice hairs on the inside of the ear. We also have this quite dark marking here. We'll do a little zigzag on there. Keep it really easy, really simple. We'll do another little one here too, and then another one just over here on the left. Potentially just one in there as well, just for the inside of the ear. So we're already pretty much there. The only thing we now need to do is the body. So we'll come down this left edge again. And again, depending on the type of dog, you may want to add in those little sort of tufts of fur, but something like this and just let your line get really thin towards the bottom so it naturally just blends out. And you can also add the back here as well. And then you can see I've got quite a firm line and then I'll go really thin with my pressure on the left. We'll do the same down here. So we've got these beautiful little tufts of hair I can see. And I'll come down here leaving some gaps and then just let that run out really nice and light. And then you can see sort of the movement in the fur here. It all kind of sort of sprouts out a little bit towards the edges like this, but then you end up with like an area like here too. So we're gonna emphasize some of those, but keeping it again, super easy, super simple. So I've got this nice dark patch here. I'm just gonna just add in a few very tiny little scribbles up and down here. We do have this little area here in the middle where the fur sort of matches or meets up in the middle from either side. Add in a couple more here too. And then I can see we've got this darker area over here. Add in some scribbles. We've got another area of darkness and another one here too. And a couple more. We'll just nicely fill out that space. We don't have to add in a full amount, just enough that we can get the illusion, of course, that there's fur there. So that is actually it for adding in everything that we need for the outline stage of things. So we use, of course, the image to guide us on that part. We can now move on and add in some color. So to do this, we don't need the image in the background anymore. We need to go ahead and turn that off for a second and you can take a look at your line work and what you've done. Feel free to go back in though and add some more details if needed. We're then gonna go ahead and go up to our actions again and we're gonna go ahead and go to canvas and we're gonna use the option of reference. If we turn on the reference, it's gonna immediately use the canvas, but we wanna use an image. So if you tap on image and then tap on import, you're gonna to wanna to find the image in your gallery. And once you do, tap on the photograph and it will drop it into your reference window. This can be moved around on your screen. So you can grab the little bar at the top and move it around. You can make it bigger or smaller to your preference by dragging in the bottom right, make it bigger. And if you tap on it in the middle, you'll get rid of the options there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand select some colors from that and paint it into our design. So if we go to our layers, we're gonna create another new layer and drag it underneath our line work. We're gonna to go to our brush. We're gonna to go to the option of painting. We're gonna to go to the option of artistic and we're gonna go right to the top until we get to the wild light brush. Now the opacity is set to 40% or 41 and the size is set to 16. Now have a practice with this first of all on the left hand side, if you press really lightly you'll see the color. And if you press a bit firmer, you'll notice that if you keep going back over yourself, slowly but surely, the color starts to dilute. See if I go up and down it a few times, it dilutes itself. So the area in the center or area that you keep going back over will really start to dilute itself. You'll end up with this really cool texture in the brush. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to lay on a large amount of color in one go. So trying to make sure your canvas is easily accessible and then we will try to build up on top of that. So going ahead and going to the dog, we're just gonna go ahead and grab what is the main color in this area. And roughly, you wanna be grabbing your color from what is somewhat the sort of main color in that area. So if you take a look at this dog, this color here, in my opinion, is the main color. These dark lines at the top, we don't wanna to touch and we don't wanna to touch those darker areas yet. If anything, you wanna start with this particular technique with a slightly sort of lighter color. So we're gonna grab what looks like the main color from here. I'll make that smaller again. And we'll also zoom out of our dog just so we can see the whole thing. So we've got a guide. And then using our brush, we're gonna go ahead and add in all of that yellow on this area of the head first. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here. I'm gonna go down, keep my pressure a bit lighter. You can adjust your pressure as you go. And we're gonna fill in this entire area here. 
go along the top of the head and down this area here. Now we don't necessarily have to stay in the lines, we can go over ourselves and outside, that's perfectly fine. Now the only thing to consider with this brush is if you need to make a correction, if I was to go back over this, I'm going to end up sort of adding another layer of colour on top. So what I recommend you do is if you don't like your base colour, do it again. Do it again and add it all in in one go. And once you've got your base colour settled down and you're ready to go with the next part, you'll have everything and you won't need to worry about sort of adjusting it later on and it looking a little bit too sort of isolated. So once you've filled in this area here, we're gonna go ahead and add in some color on the ear. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down on the ear, and grab a color, so from that dark area here, and let's just block that in. So we're not worrying about staying in the lines too much, we're letting that texture just run free and we don't have to fill in every area either. And I'm gonna go right up towards this shadow here as well. Now the ear on the left, I'm going to continue with my color on the top, just of here for a minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and we're going to go ahead and grab this area here. So this bit of color here, a little bit of a slightly more warm color and let that just run up underneath the ear and also down this edge and in towards the head again. Then in the center, we're just going to go ahead and grab like a light pinky white color and then just fill in this area. It's almost going to look a bit grey with this particular brush. So we're going to block that in in one colour. And then looking at the rest of the dog, we're using the background area as our sort of white tones. So in this particular instance with this dog, we're going to leave the white tones, we're going to add in darker colours and greys to add the sort of contour of the hairs. So let's zoom in first of all on this little snout. We're going to go ahead and grab this color just here it's like a gray color just underneath the nose make that a bit smaller again so we can see everything and if we take a look that gray can go around the nose and down towards the lips so all these little dashes here are basically our outline i'm going to go in there and we're going to block in some color and get my pressure nice and light towards the chops and go around there and then onto that bottom lip as well a little something like this and let that nicely just get a little bit darker in that area being a little bit brave with the color and we can go back over ourselves a few times if you want to darken up just underneath the nose because the brush is set to 40 percent you can nicely darken up certain areas like just around the nose where that fur runs into more of like a gray color and likewise the bottom lip Let's then go ahead and zoom in just above the nose because we have this sort of gray area here so if we hold down grab a gray, a really nice light gray, zoom out from that. We can then go ahead and add in that gray that's gonna run up to about this point here. So I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna just add in this beautiful gray color for our little poochie and then meet up to our nose there as well. So a little bit of gray on top there. Now at any point at this particular stage, if you make an error, just go to your eraser and tap on it and change it to artistic and make sure it's the wild light but also make sure that your opacity is 100% and your size can be a little bit smaller and you can just refine some shapes if need to be. You may have to press pretty firm just to go ahead and get rid of it, but that's just something in case you need to do that. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the eyes. So if we zoom in on the eye, we've got this beautiful dark outline. I'm gonna grab sort of quite a dark color from in the corner here and we're gonna go ahead and go around the eye. So I'm gonna zoom out of that just a little bit and you're gonna just wanna press with a little bit of pressure and just go around the eye down into some of those areas nearby that we identified but primarily around the eye and let go and go over it again and again especially towards the inner area here of the eye we're going to darken that up before we add in the other colors as well so i'm going to take a shade off of that i'm going to go ahead and use the exact same color over here as well so just go around the eye creating that nice dark area of the eye kind of exaggerating it a little bit and then darkening up the actual eye itself then what we can do is we can go ahead and grab this orangey brown tone just here. So grab that, it's more brown than orange. And we're gonna go really light with our pressure and we're just gonna introduce the brown in the whole of the eye and then sort of darken it up a little bit more, make it a little bit more punchy in this bottom area. Likewise, we'll move across. We'll go ahead and add in the brown on the majority of the eye and then the underside as well. 
and we're just going to darken up in these gaps as well i want to make sure that the eyes have got that darker look to it just a little something like this now the eyes themselves won't really sort of come to life just yet until we add in a highlight so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to our layers and create one more new layer and drag it above your line work then go to your colors we'll just go ahead and double tap in the top left hand corner to select white and we're going to add in a highlight just towards the right of the pupil so i'm going to press a little bit lighter than that so a little blob like that and then i'm going to go ahead and reduce my brush size down to something about three percent and add in a much brighter tone in the center so you end up with like a gradient of a light big area towards a much brighter point so if we go back to our brush and we set the brush to 16 percent and we go over to the other eye we're going to go ahead and just to the top right of the pupil again add in a dash of light then reduce it down to about three percent or two and just go ahead and add in a brighter blob towards the center and then that will give you a really beautiful highlight it will bring those eyes to life a little bit more so now it's just a matter of zooming out of our dog and starting to add more and more tones until we feel happy with it I'm happy with the base as it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my layers, I'm gonna go down to the colors we've added so far and create a new layer above it and keep the base exactly as it is. Because I feel like it's worth experimenting at this point, adding in more and more colors until you're happy with it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna do the white side of the dog first before we go back to the colors. So again, we're looking for those contour lines in the face that we were looking for initially, which is all these sort of zigzags. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the gray from those sort of contours. You can see this line just swoops down here and we're going to go ahead and just continue to add it in. So I'm going to go down here and just block in some color and it kind of runs up towards the orange tones up there, the orangey brown. We end up with a bit of gray around here too. We're then going to take a look at this area here, just up into here. So we've got these little scribbles we added earlier, which are basically like our guidelines now. And we're going to go ahead and just run that up into here link up to those grays and then we're going to continue to exaggerate all these little areas of gray that we can see so there's a little bit of gray here too i can see just above in this area here there's a bit more gray as well so i'm going to go around this it's almost in like a triangle shape and meets up towards the middle and already we're adding so much more contour to the shape of the dog's face and then we're going to go around the chops here Sort of meet up towards that gray we'll go around the chops here too and meet up towards that gray again and this gray is pretty much what we're then going to use in this area down here on the chest but you can grab the gray itself if you want to be a bit more sort of specific to where it is so anywhere where you've got like a darker strip of color we're going to go down here in one movement to start with and then we're going to identify these areas of sort of little bits of changes in the fur we have like a big dark patch that meets up to here in that middle area where we've got this little tuft little area of color and then we can go ahead and bring in the darker tones from around here towards that middle point as well and they kind of roll around we also have a dark shadow just underneath the face here so i'm just going to sort of block in that a little bit more we kind of got like a, a left hand light source and we can emphasize that again by going back over it so this is where you just want to have some fun and start to add in layers now on top so you're building up the colors in the fur but you don't always want them to be big and blocky you can make them nice and sort of scribbly like this and just let them scribble out so maybe you want to go back over some of these lines here and scribble over the top of them to emphasize the fur markings a little bit more and change them up giving them a less sort of blocky shape to them then what we'll do is we'll move across to the back area here of the dog and just add in a color from back there too so just adding that in and maybe even darkening that up towards the top area and letting that nicely just naturally fade out at the bottom if we then take a look at the face on the sort of more of the colored side of it this is where we can have some fun with some more colors so we've got this area of color here this really beautiful dark patch that kind of goes up here and down towards the nose so we're just going to bring that in have some fun sort of scratching that in bringing that along here and then it kind of makes its way up until you end up with a little bit of patch of color there a little something like this i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to be pretty brave and go back over that and add in a big block of color around here because around the eye and around here it's a little bit darker and we've got this light patch up here so i've just added in one big spread of color there we'll go down into here again and we're slowly trying to build up color still keeping it somewhat light we don't want to make it really colorful just like the photo 
but we do want to add in areas of color and contour to the face. We then have this line here. See this line that just runs up towards the eye? I'm going to go ahead and sort of zigzag over that again towards the corner of the eye. And then there's like a line just above. I'm going to add that line in just above the eye. And then there's this dark tuft. So we can go in here and hold our pen down and grab that dark tuft and add that in as well. So just nice little sort of scribbles on there. And then we can leave that. We'll move on to the top of the head up here. So we grab the color for the top of the head. And I can see that it sort of transitions towards this area of those lighter tones we were talking about. So I'm just going to scribble that in to start with, just blocking it at the top, but just letting that scribble in and go ahead and just link it up to the, um, the ear a little bit, because we've got this nice dark tone here we can sort of lean in towards. And then we're going to add in some more scribbles on top for those little sort of scribbles we added of the contours of the top of the head. So we're just keeping it nice and loose, painting over the top of them. Over here too, we've got a slightly darker patch on the inside of the ear and up here on the ear. Just going to go ahead and add that in, go along there and add in a big block of colour here and let that run out. Then we can go ahead and just grab the same colour that we wanted before in these areas here and just sort of build up on top of them again with another coat so we can add that in there, leaving a lighter patch like we've got just there. If we move across to the forehead again, just over here, there are some lines and stuff that run down. If you feel like you're pressing a bit too firm also, just lower your opacity down to say 20%. I can see from here that there's like an area here that goes up there and then kind of fades out. So let's go ahead and join in with that. So we'll go up here and just let that sort of fade out up here. We can go back over it a few times to really blend it in. And likewise over here on the left, we can just add in a sort of transition color. So I'm keeping it nice and loose and always zoom out. Keep an eye on the whole design and make sure you're not adding in too much detail. Then we'll zoom in on the top of the ear. We've got this darker tone again. So I want to emphasize this darker area. So let's go back in there. I'll increase my brush opacity back up to 40% and just sort of scribble that in on the back there. And then maybe even grab this slightly more colorful tone and come down this edge towards the ear and up towards the head there. Now already I'm really happy with how that looks however if you're not particularly happy with some of the tones that you've got in here you may want to go ahead again grab your eraser lower the opacity down to 50% and then if you need to you can just fade out some of the edges if some of those lines are a little bit too firm in terms of their sort of shapes or you can go to the smudge tool Tap on the smudge tool and use the wild light and under artistic. Bring the opacity down to 50% too. Size can be about 12. And you can smudge these out and just sort of blend them into the other colors if you feel like they're potentially a little bit too strong. So this is totally down to you and also the type of dog that you're painting as well. So we can blend them together if we want to just create a little bit more of a, a unified look to all the colors and smudge them to our heart's content creating a less bold look. So it's totally up to you and your preference of what you want to add. However, if you feel like your background of your dog is a little bit too light, you can go to the base layer that we created and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And that will really emphasize some areas. Of course, it will emphasize your darker areas too. So just bear that in mind. But that's just a little tip in case that's something you want to do. And then just keep zooming out of the photograph and making sure that you're happy with it. And the only thing I want to do is add in like a 10% extra bit of color up here. So I'm going to grab that color. I'm going to lower the opacity down of my brush to around about that sort of 10%, 15, somewhere around there. And just try to just add in a little bit more color in here. So I'm just going to go over myself a few times, just trying to bring the color in a bit more. Now it's very, very light in terms of what I'm doing. But by going over it very lightly, you're really in control of it and you can sort of say when enough is enough. So I'm going to keep going around here, adding in some more color and bring that round here as well. So it's a very, very minor change, but I can see the difference a lot more. And when you're happy with your design, you can go ahead and hit the cross on your reference. We can go ahead and zoom in a little bit and we can go full screen with four. Now that is the end of today's tutorial, but as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to give you a few tips on what you can do if you want to go ahead and draw different types of dogs. Because this particular dog has a nice big white area and I'm utilizing the background to fill in those whiter areas. 
However, what if your dog has a lot of colour in them? So if you were to draw this particular dog, which is also another dog that's on the website, if you want to go with your hand at drawing this, I'll put it in the description down below. You can follow along with the exact same steps. But this particular dog doesn't have any sort of white areas. It's just a lot and lot of different colours. So it was just a matter of painting in a big, big base coat to start with and then building up lots and lots of colour on top. So it's actually a lot easier than it looks. If we go to the layers for this particular one, I can see I've got my outline and a coloured layer and a big wash. If I actually turn off my main colours, you can see I gave it a big wash of colour. That gave us a nice background to build off of. And then we added on top, of course, all the extra tones for the rest of the dog. And then seeing that, you can see all the different tones under the shadows, around the eye and down the nose as well. Now, another question you might have is what if the dog has black fur now you're going to have to be very sparing with your color but you will have to add in a good amount of it with a dark colored area of fur you will have to add in a lot more color to of course make it look less sort of gray you want to build it up and build it up until you get those nicer darker tones here with this easy image i did of charlie my border collie you can see i just let the colors run really loose especially in his ears because they're a little bit furrier but also in the face you just had to add a lot more color and contour to the face for example, around here on the eye, you can see it sort of slopes around in and makes its way down. And then the rest of it, I just left it quite solid and gave it a big chunk of color. And he has a massive white chest. So what I did was I just grabbed a slightly off white color and just added in a nice big darker area. And you can see his collar there as well. So that's what it would look like if you had a dog that was black and white. Again, using the background as the white tones. And here's a very simple one of what Daisy looked like. My other dog, a golden retriever, as a puppy, had a very, very small nose when she was a puppy. But using a golden retriever is a really easy one to do as well. You can see what I focused on here is down here in the body, adding lots of longer lines to show that her fur is a lot longer. We added in some nice sort of squiggles in here rather than straight flicks. We added in some nice squiggles in here to show the curls and the kinks in the top of her ears and the, the fur. And then I kept the face relatively simple, just a few flicks to show the direction of fur. We had a nice darker patch up here and then the darker tone around here with the other ear at the back just being one solid color. So that's what it would look like if your dog, for example, had one tone of color all the way through. And I naturally just let the colors stop. So I hope you had fun with your pet portraits and I can't wait to see what you do with your own. As always, there's links to my socials in the description down below. So make sure to tag me in your creations. And as always, a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. On Patreon, I post three exclusive tutorials every single month that I add to my catalog. And we're over 60 tutorials now in my catalog. So if you wanna get your name featured in videos, early access to videos, sneak peeks and much much more hit the link in the description down below and if you liked this particular tutorial you'll probably like this one on the screen now where we painted a parrot in a sort of watercolor theme so be sure to check that out thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one